Hey everybody, it's Medicosis Perfectionellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. We continue talking about biochemistry. In the previous video, we had an introduction about vitamin B2. Today, we'll talk about vitamin B2 and enzymology. Vitamins are cofactors for enzymes, and vitamin B2 is no exception, because vitamin B2 will give you something called FMN and something else called FAD. Both of them are cofactors for many enzymes. Vitamin B2 is water soluble, although its solubility is slightly lower than other vitamin Bs. Look at this cutie. Riboflavin, we get it from ribose and flavin, and you get riboflavin or vitamin B2 and the sources. We talked about them in the previous video. Today's video will involve the function redox reaction, reduction oxidation reactions, including the dehydrogenase enzymes. The benefits of vitamin B2 are numerous. We've talked about these in the previous video. Today's video is FAD and FMN, redox reactions. These two work as cofactors or coenzymes or enzyme helpers. You eat eggs or fish or yeast or mushroom or whatever and it they have B2. It's bound to albumin and then you digest it here. It's here, baby. And then HCL will sever this relationship and now vitamin B2 is free. Here is a very important tip for you. Anything that depends on HCL in order to be absorbed is going to be absorbed in the earliest part of the small intestine, namely the duodenum. Same thing happened with iron, if you remember. Iron needed HCL to be absorbed, and therefore iron was absorbed in, guess what, the duodenum, because this is the earliest part of the small intestine, because this is the part of the intestine that's closest to the stomach's HCL. Medicine makes perfect sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. After you absorb it, it ends up in the liver and then riboflavin. You phosphorylate it. Where do you get the phosphate from? From ATP. And then it becomes FMN. You can stop here or you can continue. Another phosphorylation. You get the P from ATP. And then it becomes fat. You can store it in the liver as flavoproteins. These three enzymes require five cofactors in order to function, and we have discussed them in the previous video. Pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex, and branched-chain alpha-ketoacid dehydrogenase complex. So here are the enzymes that will require FMN, and these are the enzymes that require FAD. FMN are easy. You have the complex one in the electron transport chain and pyridoxal phosphate. Pyridoxal phosphate is the famous PLP. Okay, great. Enzymes needing FAD include complex 2 in the electron transport chain. You also need succinate dehydrogenase in the TCA cycle. Pyridoxin 5-phosphate oxidase, pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, alpha-ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex, and branched chain alpha-ketoacid dehydrogenase complex. Please watch my previous video. And then fatty acyl CoA dehydrogenase, retinal dehydrogenase, methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase, also known as methylene THF reductase or MTHFR. Great. Converting trip to fan to niacin requires FAD and the glutathione reductase to protect your lovely red blood cells against the evil of H2O2, hydrogen peroxide, baby. Have you ever heard of a compound named dihydrogen oxide? Yeah, this is water. <laughs> so let's start with complex 1 and complex 2 in the glorious electron transport chain in the mitochondria. Great. So we start here. NADH to NAD. This is part of complex 1. Pump the proton, baby. And then you pump the proton, pump the proton until those protons accumulate here. You have lots of protons here and they will push each other pew into the inside and then ADP plus P equals ATP mission accomplished thank you so complex one NADH to NAD but in order for you to be able to go from NADH to NAD at that same moment you should be able to go from FMN to FMNH2 so you need FMN yes therefore you need riboflavin uh-huh and then complex 2 is FADH to FAD. So you need FADH2. Yes. And therefore you are in need for some riboflavin. Uh-huh. 
So we are done with this one and this one. Now let's talk about succinate dehydrogenase. Whether you eat carbohydrate or fat or protein, they end up at acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA enters into the TCA cycle, which is also known as citric acid cycle. And since we call it citric acid cycle, you better start with citrate. Citrate, isocitrate, alpha-ketoglutarate, succinyl-CoA, succinate, fumarate, malate, oxaloacetate, back to acetyl-CoA. I love it. From succinate to fumarate, you need FAD to be converted into FADH2. So you need FAD. Yes, therefore you need riboflavin. Uh-huh. If you like what you see so far, check out my antibiotics lectures. They are not available on YouTube, but they are available on my website, medicosisperfectionalis.com. You will love this. So we are done with this one, this one, and this one. Let's talk about pyridoxin 5-phosphate oxidase. We're talking here about the metabolism of pyridoxin. If you have noticed, pyridoxin is vitamin B6. So here is the great pyridoxin, and then it becomes pyridoxin 5-phosphate. And then you get it into pyridoxal 5-phosphate. This step is FMN dependent, and therefore it requires vitamin B2 or riboflavin. Uh-huh. Pyridoxal, and then pyridoxic acid ends up in the urine. This lovely step also requires FAD. You either eat carbohydrates, proteins, or triglycerides, which are fat. So, the fats are triglycerides. And then you break them down into simple molecules, glycerol and free fatty acids. But the glycerol is never glycerol per se. It's monoglycerides or diglycerides. So you ate your double cheeseburger full of fat, and then you build up some lovely adipose tissue. This is, these are your fat cells with the signet ring nucleus appearance. Great, okay. So let's destroy the fat because you went to the gym. Very good job. Who destroys the fat? Mr. Hormone Sensitive Lipase, HCL. And it will break the triglycerides into glycerol and fatty acid. Imagine my chalk. What's going to happen to the glycerol? Glycerol kinase will convert it to glycerol 3 phosphate because the job of any kinase is to add a phosphate. But the job of a phosphatase is to remove a phosphate. But that's a kinase. That's why glycerol became glycerol 3 phosphate because we added a phosphate. It makes sense, baby. And then it goes into gluconeogenesis. What does gluconeogenesis mean? Genesis means creation. Neo means new. And then gluco is glucose. You are creating glucose from new resources. The new resources here being the triglycerides. That's why we call it gluconeogenesis. And the end product here is going to be glucose. Imagine my shock. And then fatty acids. Beta oxidations will give you acetyl-CoA. Acetyl That's lovely. And then they will enter the TCA cycle, giving you ATP. Money. But there's a problem with the fatty acid. They can also give you ketone bodies. Ketone bodies can lead to high anion gap metabolic acidosis. It's a metabolic acidosis with a high anion gap. So in Hagma, what's going to happen to your pH? pH is low. What's going to happen to your HCO3? It's going to be low. How about the anion gap? It's going to be high. Since pH is low, we call this acidosis. Since the bicarbonates are low, we call this metabolic acidosis. And since the anion gap is high, we will call this a high anion gap metabolic acidosis. Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. So here is your huge belly, but you decided to go to the gym and you break down the fat into glycerol and free fatty acids. And then fatty acids will become bound to albumin in the bloodstream. And then they will leave the albumin and they will enter your cell. Why would they enter the cell? Because you're exercising and you need energy, baby. Okay, great. Fatty acids are in the cell. How can I convert them into energy? You need three steps. Activation, carnitine shuttle, and then beta oxidation. Great. Let me start with the activation. Here is the fatty acid in the cell. You activate it by the fatty acyl CoA synthase, and then it becomes fatty acyl CoA. This is fatty acid, but this is fatty acyl CoA in the cytoplasm. Great, but we would like to shuttle it, give me an Uber, give me a shuttle, from the cytoplasm to the mitochondrial matrix. Okay, great. Who is the shuttle? Mr. Carnitine. And then Mr. Carnitine is going to drive the fatty acyl CoA from here to here. Now the fatty acyl CoA is in the mitochondrial matrix. The third step comes in, beta oxidation. You oxidize the crap out of this fat man, and then you give the lovely acetyl CoA, which will end up as energy. Let's focus on the beta oxidation. Great. Remember the shuttle? Yep. Here we have the fatty acyl CoA. Example here is the palmitoyl CoA, which is a fatty acyl CoA. It's like shocker, isn't it? 
and then by beta oxidation it becomes acyl CoA. There is a glorious enzyme here called fatty acyl CoA dehydrogenase. And when you hear this word dehydrogenase, you probably need vitamin B1 or vitamin B2, but this time we need FAD. FAD, therefore you need riboflavin. You will love this, riboflavin, FAD, as well as FMN, F me. So I hope now you understand what the F is going on. We are done with this one, we're done with this one, we're done with this one, we're done with this one. We did those three in the previous video and we did this one, famous beta oxidation. Now let's talk about retinal dehydrogenase. So here is retinal dehydrogenase. So it's a dehydrogenase, it's gonna dehydrogenate the retinal. Okay, let's dehydrogenate it. Add water and add NAD and then Give that H from the water and put it on the NAD. This will give us NADH, and then you will leave an H alone. And then this is called what? Retinoic acid. Retinoic acid is important in signaling and development of the neurons, the foregut, the eyes, big time, and the epithelium. Some clinical pearls. Remember AML, acute myeloid leukemia? Yep, we had many subtypes. Remember the M3 subtype, also known as acute promyelocytic leukemia? You can write it this way, APML. Yeah, I remember that. It was 1517 translocation. Great. It was associated with DIC. Not great. Had a very good prognosis. That's great because you could treat it with freaking vitamin A. And it was called all trans retinoic acid. Do you remember retinoic acid? Yep, you can thank the riboflavin. Or if this failed, you can go with the arsenic trial. Like you are giving arsenic to patients? Yeah, what's the alternative? Cancer. There are no solutions in life. There are only trade-offs. So we are done with all of this and now let's talk about methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase or MTHFR. This is doozy. If you have watched my hematology playlist before, we have talked about folate. So basically you eat your green leafy vegetables. That's awesome. And then they go to your gut, conjugates, and then they get absorbed in the jejunum usually. So iron, duodenum, vitamin B2, duodenum, folate, jejunum, B12, terminal ileum. You got it, baby. And then it's gonna end up being absorbed into the bloodstream. In the bloodstream, it's bound to CH3, which is methyl. Now, in order for us to function and to do anything productive, we gotta kick that methyl group off. Okay, let's kick it off. We'll kick it off and give it to vitamin B12. Oh, like, oh, why is everything on me? I'm, I'm just, I, I hate this. I'm gonna kick this methyl. Okay, kick it. You can kick it. I'm gonna kick it to the homocysteine. And then homocysteine plus methyl is gonna be converted into methionine. And look at the name of the enzyme here. Homocysteine methyl transferase. I love it. You can also call it methionine synthase because it synthesizes methionine. Chemistry makes perfect sense with medicosis perfectionalis. All right, great. Back to THF. THF is now free from the tyranny of the methyl group. THF can make like DNA. How how do you do it? Oh, like it's complicated. THF will become methylene THF and then DHF and then back to and this is the cycle. But from here to here, from THF to DHF, we have also thymidylate synthase. At that same moment, we are converting the DUMP into DTMP, and this can help us make some DNA. There are many drugs and compounds that are antifolate, including but not limited to phenytoin, which inhibits the conjugase, alcohol and oral contraceptive pills, they inhibit the absorption, and then methotrexate and trimethoprim, they inhibit the dihydrofolate reductase, and then the 5-FU, 5-fluorouracil, FU, FU back, it inhibits the thymidylate synthase. So what are the side effects of any of these drugs? Uh, megaloblastic anemia, oh yeah, with hypersegmented neutrophils, yes indeed, with high MCV, you bet. With high levels of homocysteine, oh yeah, because nobody's gonna kick the methyl to the homocysteine. So yeah, patients with folate deficiency will get homocysteinemia. I'll tell you something else. Patients with B12 deficiency will also get homocysteinemia, which is high homocysteine level in the blood, which is bad. Let's make it slightly complicated. You eat your vegetables to make your mama happy. Good job. And then the folate becomes THF. But then suddenly it becomes 
5 and 10, methylene THF. Now it's bad because now we have not just one methyl, but two methyls. We got to kick them away. Okay, how do you kick them out? We need something called methyl tetrahydrofolate reductase, and this is going to kick the first methyl out. Okay, CH3 has left the chat. And then you have only five, not just five and ten, five. Five methyl THF. This was five and ten dimethyl THF, but this is just five. Okay, five methyl. Great. Now what? Now what? You're gonna kick the methyl out. Kick it onto the B12. And then the B12 will kick it to the end. You know the rest of the story. But now THF is free and it can help us make DNA. What was the name of this lovely enzyme? Methylene THF reductase, baby. And it requires riboflavin as a cofactor. Isn't riboflavin doozy? So we are done with all of these doofuses. And now let's talk about tryptophan to niacin. Tryptophan to niacin. First, tryptophan is an amino acid that's dear to my heart. Why? Because it can give us serotonin, melatonin, and niacin. Thank you so much, Mr. Tryptophan. Okay. I give you serotonin, also known as 5-HT. 5-hydroxytryptamine, because you added a hydroxy to the tryptophan, and now you have 5-hydroxy T. Yeah, well, it's just amazing. And then serotonin will become melatonin, or its end product. 5-H-I-A-A, which is gonna end up in the urine. Go to hell. Unlike your professor, I will make this clinically relevant for you. I'll give you a purpose in life. So, there is a syndrome called carcinoid syndrome. These patients suffer from high levels of serotonin. And therefore, since they have high level of serotonin, you will have high levels of 5-H-I-A-A in the urine. And that's the diagnostic test. What is 5-H-I-A-A? This is hydroxyindoleacetic acid. Love it. These patients who have carcinoid syndrome and have high levels of serotonin are going to suffer from pellagra, vitamin B3 deficiency. What? Why? I'll tell you why. Since they have lots of serotonin, where do you think the serotonin came from? From tryptophan. Yeah, but they have a disease. All of their tryptophan has been consumed in order to make lots of serotonin. And nobody is going to make niacin. They will get niacin deficiency, which is vitamin B3 deficiency. And when you have niacin deficiency, you get what? Pellagra, the syndrome of 3D, diarrhea, dermatitis, dementia, and even the fourth D. I don't want to utter it. It's death. Mr. Tryptophan is here, niacin is here. How do you make niacin? Is it one step? No, it's complicated. Okay, tryptophan to something called quinurinine. And then after the quinurinine, you get the quinolonic acid. But from here to here, you need NADPH, you need vitamin B6, and you need FAD. FAD comes from riboflavin. We are done with all of them except glutathione reductase. Let's protect your RBCs from the H2O2, from the reactive oxygen species. There is something in biochemistry called hexose monophosphate shunt or HMP shunt or pentose shunt, whatever. Okay, normally this is glycolysis. Glucose, glucose 6-phosphate, fructose 6-phosphate, and then you end up with pyruvate. This is the normal pathway. But you can shunt it. Yeah, this is the shunt. You go to 6 whatever phosphogluconate, and then you go back to fructose 6-phosphate. This is called the shunt. What is the purpose of the shunt? A lot, actually. One of the purposes is to make NADPH, and this is freaking doozy. Why is it doozy? We'll see. But here is H2O2. It's a free radical. It's a political activist. I mean, it's a reactive oxygen species. Okay, we'd like to get rid of it. How about converting this harmful H2O2 into harmless water. That will be great. Glutathione peroxidase will do that. Great. But in order for me to go from here to here, I need glutathione to go from here to here, from the reduced form to the oxidized form. We can do this for you. How do you do it? If all of the glutathione that you have is oxidized, we will reduce it back. Who's going to do this? Glutathione reductase. And it requires FAD, which requires riboflavin. And this will take the NADPH. That's why it's doozy, because it's important. And then you convert it to NADP. At that moment, you are reducing the glutathione from the oxidized to the reduced. That's why we call this glutathione reductase. And at that same moment, you go from NADP back to NADPH. And you take the glucose 6-phosphate to 6-phosphogluconate. 
thanks to glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. Since vitamin B2 is a cofactor for fatty acyl-CoA dehydrogenase, therefore you can give vitamin B2, which is riboflavin, to patients who suffer from multiple acyl-CoA dehydrogenase deficiency because this is a beta-oxidation defect and this is a beta-oxidation enzyme boosted by the vitamin B2. You can get my cardiac pharmacology course from my website. And there is a 50% discount. Use the promo code CARDIOFARM50. Thank you so much for watching. Smash like, subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can follow me on all of these platforms. You can support me here or here. Send me an email if you like. Here is my website to get the antibiotics course and the cardiac pharmacology course. Thank you so much for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, and study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.